world that we covet. Yeah. Current events, like why do we? All right, fade the intro and send it to the newsroom. 300 offspring, and not one of them looks like me. I think I need to get tested. For what? You're a roach. Yeah, but I'm also a dad. Good evening, Centerville, and welcome back to News News. I'm Jim, this is Russ, and we're glad you're with us. Thanks, Jim. A West Virginia woman recently pled guilty to second-degree murder charges in a bizarre Valentine's Day incident involving her sister and their father. Ooh, I love bazaars. I usually come home with at least a pound of Turkish delights. Uh, bizarre, as in absurd or wildly out of the ordinary. Oh, so they had a wildly out of the ordinary Valentine's Day? You could say that. And her detailed confession to authorities, 33-year-old Anna, said the whole ordeal began with her sister Amanda and her sister's boyfriend John were coming off of meth pretty hard, and decided to move in with Anna and their father in West Virginia. You know, this kind of sounds like a setup for a good sitcom. You just got to cue up some good old traveling down the road with the meth shakes music. (laughs) In that case, it must be sweeps week, because a few weeks after moving in, the recently relocated lovebirds decided to make their own methamphetamine. See, right there. Just dedicate several episodes to the crashing couple's adventures in trying to find meth in West Virginia. It's really hard to do, so they eventually give up and try to make their own. And in our last episode, their first batch will explode, so we'll have a really good cliffhanger ending to the season. Did they survive? Find out next season on Channel 42. Wait, I'm, what, what were we talking about? She pled guilty to second-degree murder charges, so there's not much of a chance of a happy ending. Anna told authorities that the batch failed to crystallize, so Amanda just ended up with a mason jar filled with liquid meth. This infuriated their father, Larry, who assisted Amanda in her meth arts. (laughs) I see what you did there. (laughs) Thank you. So on Valentine's Day, the family decided to sit down to a lovely steak dinner in hopes of forgetting their failed endeavors. After dinner, Larry suggested that his daughter's boyfriend, John, engage in a trust activity, as you do. After all, what better way to assert your dominance over your child's lover than to bind their feet and prop them up on the couch? Well, it does sound safer than the traditional family shotgun. A shotgun would have been more humane, because after binding his feet together, Amanda bashed her boyfriend over the head with an empty wine bottle. The father-daughter's trio proceeded to torture John for hours with various household objects while accusing him of being a federal agent and demanding that he identify himself. They finally decided to finish their victim by injecting his carotid artery with their liquid meth. Mm, Damn. Well, at least there's no more suffering for old John boy. (laughs) Not so fast. Ah, kitten testicles. Yeah, turns out liquid meth doesn't kill you. It just gets you really high. John briefly fought his tormentors, but was ultimately choked to death when Anna was able to get a rope around the raging meth man's neck. They then burned his belongings, stuffed his body in a garbage bag, and buried it in their backyard. All right, so so it's not a sitcom. But I think we can work it into something for the Hallmark Channel and probably get a sponsorship with Chick-fil-A. Did she say how John felt about Christmas? I'm not so sure about John, but I'll bet newly single Amanda and her father Larry were feeling some kind of jolly. After the murder, Amanda and Larry took a trip to Tazewell County, Virginia, to apply for a marriage license. The happy, incestuous couple officially tied the knot on March 11, 2019, according to sister and assumed maiden of honor, Anna. I've seen those movies. They usually involve a step someone getting stuck in the window or a dryer or something. What are you doing back there, stepbrother? All right, for our next story, we're going to meet a middle-aged Florida man whose life was forever changed by a chance encounter with an honest-to-goodness mermaid.
Dude, that's your cue. We've lost Jim. He played the PSA. See, this is a problem with kids these days. They don't even care when a man's hands on fire. Thanks. Oh, Nick O'Team. Hey, I think I know this guy. Isn't he on Fake Taxi? Well, if he isn't, Sam Sucker definitely was. Get it? Good old days of advertising before all the unnecessary subtlety. I need hundreds of new slaves every day. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's Naomi Ainsley! Slogans to you. My aim is to catch them young! I wouldn't say that too loud, Nick. You'll end up on a list. You know, you gotta give the animators credit. Not only didn't they care, they went out of their way to make it look awful. Hey there. Have a smoke. No thanks. No thanks. Not. Ah! Why are you fire engine red? Here. Help yourself. <coughs> this is great. Ah! I see the stop sign tree is blooming early this year. What's this? Where are we? Why, tis Fleet Street! Try the priest! You had a whole marketing team, and that was the name you came up with? <coughs> if the pussy is smoking, maybe lay off for a bit. Well, I don't like the look of this. The year is 2045. Cigarettes have taken over the world. Joe Camel is the declared supreme overlord. Look! The hidden backside of ass play! Your teeth! And yours? Wow, oh, breath poor! So what? Well, I don't like it. I'm going back. You have to grow up sometime. I remember my first cigarette that transported me to a cigarette-themed hellscape. I hope he picked a safe word with his cigarettes. My chain gang! My chain Somewhere on a living room carpet, the future director of Human Centipede gets his first adult feelings. If Goodnight Moon was written by RuPaul. Give us a fag. 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 Smoking makes you more manly. Just ask John Wayne. Damn, he died of lung cancer. some light. Have a good look. Ill health, bronchitis, heart disease, lung cancer. And most of them are killers. Are you fed up with life? No. Well then, why poison yourself? Hey Doc, why are your eyeballs the same color as your skin? Cigarette smoke is poisonous. When you inhale, you're drawing all sorts of chemicals into your lungs. The smoke irritates your windpipe and lungs and causes chronic bronchitis that kills tens of thousands of people every year. Of course, about a third of that is just oxygen tank explosions. And that kills 30,000 people a year. 
80 people every day. And those people can't smash the like button and subscribe. Really? Don't hustle shame me. Causes of death in middle age. We've determined the cause of death to be googly eyes. Including cancer in other parts of the body. Not cancer of the shoe! Those Nikes have kids! Then, I bet you do. No, I used to, but like most doctors, I've given up. I'm on a cool new thing called opioids. I can write you a prescription. I don't care. I want a light. Got a light? Yet another amazing invention from the mind of Elon Musk. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. Call me crazy, but I like the direction the new Rocky and Bullwinkle is taking. I say, that's what you get for wearing a fez out in public. Good old Satan in his portable cemetery glory halls. Hey, somebody engraved between scenes. I thought so. That's me, one of the lucky ones. Or am I? Hey! Not if you stay on that road, chum. The 60s, where a random stranger you meet while hitchhiking in a graveyard teaches you life lessons about healthy lifestyles. Did you ever smoke when you were my age? Sure. We didn't know about lung cancer and the rest. We only knew the constant clawing hunger and the fear of a saber-toothed tiger. Besides, I like to stay healthy. Say, what size handcuff are you? Three, four... At the rate you're carrying on, that's a small fortune going up in smoke. Why waste money when you can buy something you really want? Why like three invisible pantsless albinos or a German robot head? Or hire a poltergeist to haunt a record shop. Pay a hitman to dispose your enemies in new and exciting places. thought of it that way. Well, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Sketchy truck driver! I'm giving up on the smokes for my real passion. Littering! Well, I've had that. Me too! Pills! Pills! And I thought they were hooked and in the chain gang for life! Ugh. It's no fun too much these days. Seems like a lot of unholy magic going into cigarettes. Yeah, what about the old standards like spinning heads and crawling on the ceiling? About a game. And they ran off to be eloped in Botswana. I am thoroughly lost. Yeah, see, it makes sense because he's the devil and they were smoking, but now it's Saka and... Uh, cricket! It's what lung cancer would be if it was a sport! And just like that, Johnny won the golden fiddle because he was better at not smoking sports. Triathlons are boring. When does the luckless guy shoot his girlfriend? Now they're just being jerks. They know the clearance wasn't big enough. Sure, he tried to kill him, but is killing him back really the answer? They need about 1,500 more bodies and it'll be just as clean as the Hudson. Who wants a smoke? How about you? Not with those cuticles looking the way they do. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Just like that, the pent-up satanic energy that had been used to influence impressionable minds towards carcinogenic ways exploded forever, damning his wretched existence to the pits of rapists and thieves. That's beautiful, man. Is that on a Hallmark card? All right.
night is over. Smoke him if you got. For further coverage of the meth family story, we've got Chip out in Skagusky, West Virginia, where the murder took place. Uh, Chip, can you hear us? What's the community saying about this grizzly slaying? Well, guys, the community is obviously very upset over the loss of what can only be described as a shit ton of meth. They were really pulling for this family to come together and make the best of the meth they were making. But tragedy has befallen the simple meth-smoking folk of this West Virginia hamlet. It sounds like things are feeling pretty grim out there. You know, I'm not gonna lie. When they first told me, I couldn't believe it. But now that the space penguins have stolen my soul and replaced it with a frozen macaroni and cheese dinner, I feel much better about the plaid pajama shirt. What's so hard about making meth? All you have to do is combine a fair drain with ammonia and lithium, mix in water, add gasoline as a solvent to extract the methamphetamine, and then you just need to use an acid to cause crystallization. How do you... Uh, land at a church camp? Say, Jim, if you were able to pick out how you would die, what would it be? Hmm. I guess quickly and surrounded by loved ones. Well, you and this guy have something in common because he died from shrapnel when a homemade cannon exploded into a baby shower. Huh. Well, that pretty much sums it up. All right, in our next story, Fred Farmer was a retired auto worker who was a regular hunter. However, in November of 2019, he went hunting with people none of his family knew, and strangers still neglected to bring his constant canine companion with him. The curious just kept getting curiouser when Fred failed to come home in a timely manner. Though there was a text message sent to his daughter explaining that he would be extending his stay as an excuse for his absence. Eventually, family became suspicious of the text messages when they used proper grammar and emojis. Oh, hey, look, our 58-year-old father sent us a text message. OMG, I'm totes killing mad animals. Be home laters. T-T-Y-L, winky face, eggplant, gun fingers. And the truth came to light when the police obtained security footage that showed Jeremy Farmer, son of the missing man, visiting a local Lowe's hardware store after his father went missing. During the visit, Jeremy bought a 96-gallon trash can with wheels, germicidal bleach, latex gloves, and extra heavy plastic drop cloths. The kicker here was that the items were paid for using Fred Farmer's debit card. Dude, that reminds me of that ransom case where they took pictures of the kidnapping victim with the current issue of the newspaper, but the girl was already dead. Oh, Jesus! Yeah, <laughs> it was really messed up. You want to see? What? No! Oz! Already on it! And that's the show! If you liked what you saw, please hit the thumbs up button and click the bell to get notifications when new content is uploaded. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you can be called to testify when someone finally checks the thumbs down back. What? And check out our Instagram at runs underscore does underscore stuff or buy the t-shirt at the link in the description. Runs and